Climate change is becoming one of the most pressing issues affecting social and economic development in Zambia. This southern African country of some 20 million inhabitants is already experiencing climate-induced hazards. They include prolonged dry spells, flash and seasonal floods. Some of these hazards, especially prolonged dry spells, have increased in frequency and intensity over the past few years. Streams have disappeared due to prolonged dry spells. The livelihoods of rural communities, food and water have been adversely impacted. Gwembe district in the southern province has not been spared. Gwembe is home to some 79,273 people. Its geographical location in the Zambezi escarpment valley makes it even more vulnerable. Agriculture plays a pivotal role in the socio-economic development of Gwembe district. Smallholder farmers are involved in the cultivation of grains such as maize and sunflower. For the highly agriculture dependent residents of the district, prolonged dry spells are a source of concern. The rains were not enough. As you can see, there is nothing to point at. We thought things would get better by April, but there was nothing. This is a huge blow because my family and I depend on the fields for survival. This year, farmers like Roska and her family have seen sunflower yields drop significantly. It is becoming evident for farmers in the district that the very poor harvest will lead to a food shortage. Roska is in fact concerned about the possibility of hunger. We will die of hunger. Majority of people haven't harvested anything here in central Gwembe. There is literally nothing for us to eat. Her story is not very different from that of other smallholder farmers. In the face of the unprecedented adversity, farmers like Wilbert Ziangale could not even plant the crop due to lack of rain. First, we had challenges getting sun for our seed. The people who help us get the seed didn't go on time to the city. By the time I got the seed, the rain stopped before we could even plant. Farmers in some parts of the district were indeed lucky. In Manengwe village, farmers managed to plant their crop before the onset of the dry spell. Consequently, the bountiful harvest farmers had hoped for never came. This year, Patrick Kanda's harvest can best be described as better than nothing. We meet Patrick at home and drying his harvest which is on top of maize cobs. The few bags he has salvaged are a true reminder of how critically bad things have been compared to the previous years. I planted around December month end, and before the seeds were produced, the rains stopped and it hasn't rained to date. What I have managed to harvest grew and produced seed because of dew. For most households, farming is aimed primarily at providing food for family sustenance. Then comes the second but not negligible function, generating income. For most village dwellers, the sale of farm produce is at times the only source of income that is badly needed to meet other household needs. Certainly, a poor or no harvest at all spells doom for farmers who have no alternative source of income. Things are really very bad here. We depended on government for handouts, but now there is nothing. So we have to fend for ourselves. The challenge is that there will be no expelling of cooking oil to sell. This also means there will be no money to support the family and the children because there is nothing to harvest because there was no rain.
In a normal situation, I would harvest enough bags which I take to the seat for oil expelling. I sell some oil and also consume some. But without the cash crops, there is nothing I can do but to seek help from the authorities. The district agriculture office is the first port of call for farmers in good as well as bad times. Officials in the Gwembe office are aware of the situation that farmers are facing. The acting district agriculture coordinator, Devi Montali, says that despite the challenges, the office is offering support to farmers. We are encouraging our farmers to be planting early so that they take advantage of the, the shortness of the, 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 the season. Our agriculture season is very short as compared to other districts. Here we receive uh, rainfall late and it goes early. And uh, due to the high temperatures, you find that the moisture in the soil uh, evaporates quite uh, easily. So Even as they struggle to deal with the adversity, many farmers are fully aware that they have nothing else but their farms from which to make a living. Farmers in Handiabantu and Zulu villages are already focusing all their attention and energy on preparing for the next planting season. The disastrous yields have pushed many farmers into seeking advice and support information from Agric Extension Services. Camp Extension Officer Caroline Manza explains. We've been telling our farmers, we've been teaching our farmers about reaping, conservation farming. So in terms of these drought spells, we expect each farmer to do reaping, or let me just say conservation farming. Conservation farming helps it to hold water than just this normal, normal tilling of land. Sunflower is becoming the second most popular crop after maize that is grown by smallholder farmers in Gwembe district. The farmers want the DACO office to help them with early maturing seeds for the coming planting season. The farmers argue that this will help address the poor yield challenges even when the district rainfall pattern remains as disrupted as it has become. We really need the authorities to assist us with early maturing seed. The seeds should be distributed in good time so that we plant as soon as the first rains come. We need early maturing seed that will enable us to have some harvest by March or April. With such, we will be assured of a good harvest even if we don't get enough rains. The rainfall pattern is very poor here, but if we are given the early maturing seed variety, we will at least be able to harvest something at the end of the day. Godfrey Mukume is the village headman of Handiabantu. The traditional leader fears that come next farming season, his people are likely to face the same challenges if the DACO's office does not supply air maturing seed. Hunger is looming in this village. The harvest are not enough to take us to the next season. We are therefore asking government to assist so that we can stay afloat next season. The DACO's office is privy to this call. However, the emphasis is on a wide range of agricultural practices to help the farmers make use of the little rainwater the district receives. At the center of all these challenges is the need for farmers to also understand the nature of their agroecological zone. The Zambia Meteorological Department is working with the Minister of Agriculture to inform farmers of the weather situation. What will be the impacts because of the dry conditions, for example, that we are anticipating uh, if, if, we, if we anticipate those conditions and also what are the likely impacts in terms of uh, the conditions that favor uh, pests and diseases and what should farmers do uh, when those things arise. So that's how, that's, that's how, that's the information we provide in our agrometeorological bulletin. The department is further installing new automated weather instruments in Gwembe to help with precise weather forecasting. Department Director Edson Nkonde 
says this exercise is part of a robust nationwide program aimed at facilitating a smooth dissemination of weather information to farmers in drought-prone areas like Gwembe. Now that gives us opportunity to understand more in details in localized uh, settings so that we understand what local effects may be there that are even driving uh, the, the, the dryness. But generally, in those areas, we expect uh, less rainfall uh, because they are in the valleys uh, and, and, of course, uh, the other impacts may be even the little that is received because of the, the, they are in the valleys, the temperatures are, high, are elevated. We record uh, on average during the rain season, on average above 35 degrees Celsius in those areas, which is quite high. Climate-induced changes to physical and biological systems are already exerting considerable stress on Zambia's agriculture sector. Prolonged dry spells in Gwembe are deflating efforts to reduce poverty and food insecurity. This is particularly true because most of Zambia's poor population consists of rural small-scale farmers who rely on agriculture. Temperature trends point at the potential for increased heat stress, land degradation and droughts. Measures to protect farmers must be taken with a sense of agency.